So far, we have learned different types of circuit analysis methods, basic concepts, and now we will learn a new component, which will be extremely useful in order to do different signal processing operations using electrical circuits, and we will utilize everything what we have learned so far in order to analyze these circuits with operational amplifiers. After covering the basics of operational amplifiers, we will learn the ideal model of op amps and then we will learn based on this idealized model the nodal analysis of op amp circuits. Operational amplifier is an active electronic circuit element designed to be used with other circuit elements to perform signal processing operations. Here we are seeing a dual inline package 741 type operational amplifier with 8 pins. The upper left corner of this operational amplifier is denoted with a black dot and we start enumerating the pins from this point. We have 8 pins, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. And 5 pins of this operational amplifier are important. Inverting input, non-inverting input, negative voltage supply, positive voltage supply and the output of this operational amplifier. What is inside an operational amplifier? It is actually a complicated circuit consisting of many, many transistors. We will learn about the design of transistors and operational amplifiers later in the electronics course. However, for the purposes of the electrical circuits, we will treat the operational amplifiers as uh, ideal circuit elements uh, which can be modeled using the tools of linear circuit theory. Here you see the historical evolution of operational amplifiers. Uh, in 1953, we had operational amplifiers with vacuum tubes, not even transistors. Then the first discrete op amps and the first integrated circuits emerged in 1961 with this P45 type operational amplifier. You can see the resistors and capacitors and other components on this op amp. Later in 1970s, close to 1980s, we have a new integrated circuit op amps and Today, and actually for the last 15 20 years, we have op amps in a dual inline packages or even indeed in more smaller footprint packages such as small mount component packages uh, like this. They look like a small box with legs. All right, what is the circuit symbol for operational amplifiers? It is this triangle with minus and positive signs. It has two inputs, inverting input with minus sign, non-inverting input with the positive sign, and the output node. And even though it is omitted in many of the schematics, we also have positive and negative power supplies. Usually, when we deal with an operational amplifier, we tell that uh, it's an active circuit element, it takes very small inputs but it can generate a big output and it is actually impossible to create something out of nothing that additional power which is output is actually being supplied by the positive power supply or negative power supply which we don't consider in the circuit analysis process so if you write the kirchhoff's current law for the operational amplifier we have i1 plus i2 plus i minus supply i positive supply plus uh, i0 which for the convention we are uh, writing with a direction entering the output node op amps are complicated devices which exhibit both linear and nonlinear responses for linear operation the output magnitude should be less than the saturation voltage, output current should be less than saturation current, and the slew rate, in other words, how fast the output changes should be less than the slew rate. For instance, for the type 1 741 op amp with plus minus 15 volt supply voltages, the saturation voltage is 14 volts, actually 13.6 volts due to the two diode drops in the output stage. 
I saturation is equal to 2 milliamps, it is rather small, and slew rate is 500,000 volts per second. You might think that this is a very big number and we will never come to the saturation level. However, imagine that we want to follow some type of sinusoidal input with 1 megahertz. Then we will have 1 million times the signal going from the negative value to the positive value and our slew rate will be saturated. During normal operation, an operational amplifier takes the difference between the two inputs V2 minus V1 and multiplies them with a very high gain like 1 million and puts that as output. But of course, even if you would have a very small input, we would have a huge output which would make the circuit saturated. We are using operational amplifiers nearly in all cases in feedback mode and when we operate with them in the feedback mode in which we are connecting the output node through some ways to the back to the input, we assume V2 is equal to V1. And we are also assuming infinite input impedance or input resistance for the operational amplifiers. In other words, the operational amplifier does not get any current inside the minus and positive inputs. Let's analyze this operational amplifier which has feedback. Feedback means that I have this output connected back to the input through here. So here I have Vs and here I have a Rs. Here I have I2 but during normal operation I know that I2 is equal to zero. If I2 is equal to zero then the current passing through this resistor S is also zero. In other words, there is no voltage drop over this resistor. Therefore, V2 will be equal to Vs. In ideal operation, I know that both V1 and V2 are equal to each other. And therefore, V1 is equal to Vs as well. And this Vs is connected to the output. So here I have Vs. And similarly, this is also V output. So basically, this is a circuit which takes an input and puts it to the output. It is a unity gain buffer. It does nothing, but it actually does everything. It is one of the most fundamental configurations we use for impedance matching. All right, let's assume this, this is a 741 type op amp with 14 volt output saturation voltage with 2 milliamps output saturation current and a slew rate of 500,000 volts per second. Since the input is here 10 volts and RL is 20 kilo ohms, the output will be a constant value as well and therefore we will not be limited by the slew rate. Let's see whether we are getting saturated. We have calculated in the previous slide the output of this op-amp topology will be equal to the input voltage Vs. So since the output is 10 volts and since this is less than 14 volts, we are not output saturated as well with respect to the voltage. Similarly, I have V out 10 volts and RL is equal to 20 kilo ohms. So, accordingly, 10 volts divided by 20 kilo ohms, I have output current of 0 0.5 milliamperes, which is less than the saturation current, and therefore I am also not output current limited. So, since we are not limited in slew rate, output voltage, and output current, this we can conclude that this operational amplifier is operating in the linear mode. Now we need to conduct the nodal analysis of this ideal op-amp circuit and we start with this difference amplifier. Where will I start my analysis? I always started with the part which is not connected to the feedback. 
because the other part of the circuit is connected through feedback to the output. So what will I do? I know that the current going this way is equal to zero. Therefore, I can simply find the voltage at this point using the voltage divider rule. So it will be 3 over 4 dB because I have 10 kilo ohms and 30 kilo ohms in series and I can utilize the voltage divider rule. And I know also that V1 is equal to V2 and therefore here I have 3 over 4 VB as well as the node potential. At this point, I will try to find an expression for the current IA flowing from here because this current, since no current is flowing this way, will all be flowing through the 30 kilo ohm resistor to the output node. So here I have IA as well. So let's try to write IA using VA and 3 over 4 VB. IA will be equal to VA minus 3 over 4 VB in parentheses divided by 10 kilo ohms. Similarly, I can write IA using V1 and V out here. IA will be equal to 3 over 4 VB minus V out, this time divided by a 30 kilo ohm resistor. Let us try to call this equation 1 and equation 2 and write 1 is equal to 2 because both of them are IA. Hmm. 3 times VA minus 9 over 4 VB will be equal to 3 over 4 VB minus V0. From here, I calculate V0 as minus, because here I have a minus sign, 3 times VA minus VB, which is equal to 3 times VB minus VA. In other words, this circuit takes the input VB and VA, takes the difference between those, and multiplies it with 3. So it is indeed a signal processing circuit, which is a difference amplifier. Now we need to do the nodal analysis of this op-amp circuit. This is a bridge amplifier, and indeed this part of the circuit looks quite frightening. I don't know how to deal with that. But maybe one good idea would be divide and conquer. We can find the tevenne coulomb circuit for this part, and then simplify the circuit and solve the simplified equivalent circuit. So how will I do that? Let's redraw. I am redrawing from this port A till port B. So A, resistance, 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 and resistance. And here plus minus voltage source. R1, R2, R3, and R4. Firstly, I will try to find the R7N, and for this I will short circuit the current source. Here I have R1. R2, R3, and R4, and here out port B. So when we look at this circuit, we realize that the upper parts of R1 and R2 are connected to the same node, and bottom parts are also, in effect, connected to the same node, and the upper parts of the R3 and R4 are connected to the same node, and bottom parts are connected to the same port as well. So I can write R Tevenin as R1 in parallel R2 in series with R3 in parallel R4. Let us try to write this uh, better. So it will be R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. 
and this will be R3 times R4 divided by R1 R3 plus R4. This is the terrain and coolant resistance. I have RT. Now I need to find V open circuit plus minus here. So assuming that this node B is the reference node, then I can assume that this node here is V open circuit. Let me define these two additional nodes, V1 and V2 here. And let us write the equations which I can write for nodal analysis. V1 minus V2 is equal to Vs. This is one of these equations. From here I have V1 is equal to V2 plus Vs. It might be useful. Now I see here a super node. I define this as my super node. And let's write the equation of uh, Kirchhoff's voltage a uh, current flow for the supernode. V1 divided by R3, current going out this way, plus V2 divided by R3, current going out that way, plus V2 minus V open circuit divided by R2, plus V1 minus V open circuit divided by R1, should be equal to zero. This is another equation I wrote. This, let's number them. This is one. This is two. What other equation I can write? I can write the Kirchhoff's current law for VOC. VOC minus V1 divided by R1 plus VOC minus V2 divided by R2 is equal to zero. Now, what should I do? Aha, uh -huh, I see. This term here is the negative of this term. This term here is the negative of that term. So let me call this equation 3. And I will add 2 and 3. So I will end up with, at the end of this, V1 over R3 plus V2 over R4 is equal to 0. Now, this is not that bad. I can write the further as R4 4 times V1 plus R3 times V2 is equal to 0. Now, wherever I see V1, I can write V2 plus Vs. R4 times V2 plus Vs plus R3 times V2 is equal to 0. So what do I have? I have R4 times Vs is equal to minus R3 plus R4 in parentheses times V2. From here I find V2 is R4 times Vs divided by, with a minus sign here, R3 plus R4. Okay, I found one more piece of information. Alright, now I have the expression for V2 and I can find V1 using this information. Let's write V1 is equal to V2 plus Vs minus R4 divided by R3 plus R4 times Vs plus Vs. Accordingly, V1 is equal to R3 divided by R3 plus R4 times Vs. Now, I have the expression for V1 as well. Let me solve this expression for V open circuits. Uh, then V open circuit will be equal to R2 times V1 plus R1 times V2 divided by R1 plus R2. So I know V2 and V1 and I can plug these expressions into this expression to here and here. 
So let us try to do that. Accordingly, V open circuit will be equal to a long expression R2 times R3 over R3 plus R4 times, no, no times, both of them are Vs, so I will take Vs to the outside, minus R1 times R4 divided by R3 plus R4. And all of these expressions will be divided by R1 plus R2. So now I have the open circuit as a function of Vs. I think I can simplify this expression further. Let us try. V open circuit is equal to R2 times R3 over R3 plus R4 divided by R1 plus R2 times Vs. I think I will need a longer line. Times Vs. And here I have minus R1 times R4 divided by R3 plus R4. So far I have not done anything except writing the this expression again in the next line. But here comes a trick. I will add to this expression R2 times R4 divided by I3 plus R4 and I will subtract the same expression. It sounds and looks useless, but it will work. R3 plus R4. Now, let me change colors. Let's look at this part. I can write this as V open circuit is equal to in R2 parenthesis R2 times R3 plus R4 divided by R3 plus R4 and this is whole thing divided by R1 plus R2 and I can write the right side as at the bottom part I will have R1 plus R2 and I have the minus sign here so I will have R4 times R1 plus R2 divided by R3 plus R4. Now, I can write this further as this expression will become 1. So R2 divided by R1 plus R2 minus this would cancel itself with this one. So that expression will become R4 divided by R3 plus R4. So the V open circuit will became this simplified expression. I even forget what problem I was solving, but I have at least V open circuit. Let's see what we can do with it. Wait a minute. I am making a silly mistake. Here, all of these terms are multiplied by Vs. And therefore, I will multiply this term with Vs as well. Now it is correct. Now I found the equivalent circuit between the terminals A and B, which consists of an open circuit voltage and artevenin resistance. And when I put it inside the circuit, the circuit looks much simpler. Here I have RT, here I have the open circuit, and I know that no current is flowing this way. That means that no current is flowing over this resistor, and therefore here I have the open circuit. Similarly, here I have the open circuit as well with current only flowing this way and that way. Let us write the Kirchhoff's current law. V open circuit minus V out divided by R5 plus V open circuit divided by R6 will be equal to zero. R6 times V open circuit minus R6 times V out plus R5 times V open circuit will be equal to zero. From here I get R5 plus R6 times V open circuit is equal to R6 times V out 
and b out is accordingly r5 plus r6 divided by r6 times v out which is equal to 1 plus r5 over r6 times v0 the open circuit now i can plug this expression inside the open circuit and the equation becomes 1 plus r5 over r6 times r2 over r1 plus r2 minus r4 divided by r3 plus r4 times vs so i found the final expression which relates the output vo to the input vs and concluded the solution of my circuit this looks like a complicated circuit so as always i start from the part which is not connected to the output so i will analyze this part first what do i know zero amps is flowing through the positive terminal so and i have been given a very important hint here over this resistor i will have 60 micro amperes of current flowing so i can calculate here v1 as this i have here minus 2.75 volts and we will have a further drop so minus 2.75 minus 30 kilo ohms times 60 microamps is equal to v1 so this will be minus 2.75 minus 30 times 60 is 1800 i have kilo and i have micro so i this will be 1.8 volts is equal to v1 from here accordingly i find v1 is equal to minus 4.55 volts one piece of information what is the second piece of information i have v1 should be equal to v2 so here i have v1 as well and i know the value of v1 moreover i know that zero amps is flowing through the negative inverting terminal of the op amp so i will also have a voltage drop over this 40 kilo ohm due to the 20 milliamperes of current flowing this way here 20 milliamperes is flowing so vm will be equal to what vm will be equal to v1 minus 20 micro amperes times 40 kilo ohms accordingly vm will be equal to minus 4.55 volts minus 20 times 40 is 800 so we have micro and we have kilo so it will be 0 0.8 volts and this will be minus 5.35 volts so the output of this circuit will be if we have done the mathematics correctly minus 5.35 volts by following the simple rules it is rather easy to analyze the even complex looking op-amp circuits let's analyze this circuit now easily i can state that i will have a potential of zero volts here and similarly i will have zero, zero volts here as well and we know that no current is flowing in therefore we can calculate the current flowing this way because i have a higher potential here and lower potential there so let's call this i1 i1 will be equal to zero minus minus 3.35 volts note the polarity of this source divided by 20 kilo ohms and this will be equal to plus 3.35 volts divided by 20 kilo ohms and will be equal to 167.5 micro amperes so i found this similarly this i1 will be flowing from this node 3 towards here and i will have i1 here as well 
let's denote the voltage at this node 3 as V3. V3 minus 0 divided by 40 kilo ohms will be equal to I1 and this is equal to 167.5 microamperes. And accordingly, V3 will be equal to 167.5 microamperes times 40 kilo ohms, which is equal to 6.7 volts. Now I know the value of V3, which is 6.7 volts. I know in addition to this I1, and I can find the other currents as well. So let's do this analysis. I need to find Vm, which is this node voltage. I have V3, I know I1. I can find this I2. I2 will be equal to 6.7 volts divided by 10 kilo ohms. And it will be 0 0.67 milliamperes. But if I want to write it in terms of uh, microamperes, it will be 670 microamperes. Then, assuming that I have a current I3 flowing this way, I can write the KCL for this for this top node. It will be I1 plus I2 plus I3 is equal to 0. And I3 will be equal to minus I1 plus I2, which will be equal to minus 167.5 microamperes plus 670 microamperes and will be according to minus 837.5 microamperes. This is I3. Now that I have I3, I can find uh, Vm. Specifically, I3 will be equal to V3 minus Vm divided by 8 kilo ohms. And accordingly, Vm will be equal to V3 minus 8 kilo ohms times minus 837.5 microamperes. And V3 is 6.7 volts. The multiplication result here is 6.7 volts again, but it's minus. So it will be 6.7 plus 6.7 volts, and the result will be, according to for Vm, 13.4 volts for the Vm. So now we found Vm using the nodal analysis.